Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is the day before the Gervonta Davis-Ryan Garcia fight. Let's update our thoughts on that fight. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now we'll give a post-fight analysis on the Zhang Joyce fight in a later video. Let's focus on Davis Garcia here. Now if you get one takeaway from this video, <clears throat> I want it to be that you need to be careful here. You need to be hedged, right? Just first and foremost, you need to be hedged. Now, <clears throat> you don't have to know the who wins the fight, right? You don't have to know the who. This is that fight where I believe you want to know the how, right? Now, I personally feel that Gervonta Davis wins the fight, but I need for people to hear the odds, consider the odds, structure how they're going to play it because the casino has made Gervonta Davis a big favorite, right? There's a lot of risk involved. So let's talk about it. The question comes down to which one is it? Is this a drained and depleted fighter who gave away the fight? when he signed a rehydration clause, right? The fighter is coming in at 136 after having fought at 140, right? He's draining his body and the fighter is big for 136 and the fighter cannot gain more than 10 pounds after the weigh-in. Is this that fight where that fighter is fighting a heavy puncher, right? Heavy puncher, a guy who himself was at 140 and stopped Mario Barrios, for example. A heavy puncher who's a southpaw who does not have to use his right hand too much to open up against his opponent whose big punch is a devastating left hook. Now, are we looking at that fight where Ryan Garcia is losing weight, is going to be less than he would be fully hydrated to fight a dangerous Gervonta Davis with a devastating left hand, right? Gervonta doesn't have to give Ryan Garcia countering opportunities with his left hook. Think Southpaw and the comparison's unfair because this guy was a defensive wizard. Pernell Whitaker against one of Ryan Garcia's mentors, Oscar De La Hoya. Now, is this that fight, or is this fight a bigger man who's young, who can handle losing weight and then gaining weight, who can deal with yo-yoing weights, whose body still has the resiliency of youth with a bigger punch? Now, make no mistake. Right? I need for people to be clear here. Ryan Garcia is a devastating puncher. That left hook is devastating, just like De La Hoya's left hook was devastating. Right? Who? Bigger man, bigger punch. Who just beat a lefty? Right? Javier Fortuna. A guy who is not fighting a defensively blessed fighter. 
right? Let's face it, Gravante Davis is devastating, but he's not Floyd. He's not Purnell when it comes to defense, right? And you need to know this. There's a hand speed gap in this fight. Say what you want about Ryan Garcia, folks. He has very quick hands. That left hook that he throws, really, the punch that's analogous to me would be Roy Jones's left hook, right? Just like Jones's left hook was here trigger, <clears throat> Ryan Garcia's left hook is here trigger, right? Which one is it? Is this a, you gave away the fight when you signed the deal to come in light, to not fully hydrate? Is this that fight or is this a good big man beats a good little man? Right? How is Gervonta Davis going to get past Ryan Garcia's left hook if he's not a Pernell Whitaker? Who knows what he's doing defensively? Now, again, I feel the former. I feel Ryan Garcia hurt himself greatly in the negotiation for this fight. Right? Understand, Ryan Garcia could have said, player, you fought at 140 before. Isn't it fraudulent for you to be claiming you're the smaller man when we've both fought at 140 in the past? Right, that Mario Barrios fight was a title fight for Tank. Right? Ryan Garcia could have said, Tank, you and I know that I'm extremely popular. Right? Life's unfair. Right? For some reason, Anthony Joshua is extremely popular at heavyweight. Right? The most popular fighter isn't necessarily the fighter with the best resume. Right, Ryan Garcia could have said, look, I'm looking around the landscape. I'm seeing all kinds of fighters out there who I could fight at 140, right? Gar Garcia could have said, look, if I'm going to come down to 135, you know, then I'd want to fight someone who didn't hit hard. You could read between the lines and figure out who I'm talking about at 135. There are multiple guys with big names at 135 who don't hit like Tank. Why would Garcia, in a contract negotiation, at a time when you have all kinds of talent, 135 and 140, right? Isn't Regis Progre at 140? Isn't Josh Taylor at 140? Isn't Teofimo Lopez at 140? Right? There's so many guys at 140. Why would he give away these terms to Gervonta Davis? Davis himself is a box office star. But understand, it only takes one to get the big box office for the fight. Fans would have shown up in droves for Ryan Garcia against a Regis Progre. Garcia, too, is big and fast. He's faster, folks, than Terrence Crawford. If he wanted to go the high-risk route, why wouldn't Garcia think about challenging one of the bigs at 147, I'm not saying he wins that fight, but I'm just saying with Garcia's punch and hand speed, he'd have at least an argument. Now, I want people to understand the two sides of the aisle here. You've heard from the Gravante Davis side of the aisle, right? Floyd Mayweather is a big name. Floyd believes Gervonta is going to put Ryan Garcia to sleep for a long time, right? I don't think Floyd wants anyone to get maimed in the fight or, you know, injured. But let's just say Floyd's expecting a full 10 count, right? Leonard Ellerby, and granted, these guys have had a commercial relationship with Gervonta Davis in the past, right? Leonard Ellerby really feels that this fight's a stepping stone fight for Gervonta Davis to become what he calls the face of boxing. 
But what I want people to do is I want people to understand that there quietly is a Ryan Garcia side of the aisle, right? Robert Garcia, one of the best trainers in the sport, right? I'm telling you, I was looking at a Marcus Maidana fight and Maidana hardly looked recognizable. He was fighting so differently. Then they announced that he was with Robert Garcia, and I realized, okay, well, <laughs> that explains it. Garcia is a guy who is excellent at making predictions. He feels quietly that Ryan Garcia is simply too fast for Gervonta Davis. Now, he's not the trainer of Ryan Garcia. Right? This is just a trainer telling you he thinks the hand speed gap is too great. Right? Understand, too, age matters. If Ryan Garcia were 38 years old and were trying to yo-yo and wait like this, let's just say I don't think he'd pull it off. But he's in shape and he's in his 20s. Right? You also privately have Oscar De La Hoya. And understand, De La Hoya, same devastating left hook, same hand speed as Ryan Garcia. Right? The difference between the two is De La Hoya, quite frankly, had the much better resume. Right? De La Hoya was fighting people like Chavez, uh, Ike Corte, uh, Fernando Vargas. Right? Um, he was actually out Floyd. He was out there fighting the A-listers. Ryan Garcia, young guy, early part of his career, right? Let me talk about another person who's interesting, Joe Goosen. He's Ryan Garcia's trainer. Understand he has a commercial relationship with Ryan Garcia. But Joe Goosen, who's been in the game a long time, and he's not a cheerleader type. Right? This is the trainer who will criticize his own fighters. Right? He just flatly says that he has rarely seen punching power like Ryan Garcia's punching power. Let me also say, too, that the best opportunities you're going to get in life are often not ideal. I'm sure Ryan Garcia would prefer to rehydrate properly for the fight. I'm sure he'd prefer to come in with those four extra pounds for the weigh-in, right? But Ryan Garcia, before this fight, gave interviews where he talked about how he felt his style worked better against southpaws. In other words, if you go to my favorites folder right now, you're going to see a video of him against Luke Campbell. And you're going to see in that video, as you listen to the audio, right, and it's a highlight video, they actually tell you about Garcia's belief, and he's fighting a southpaw in Campbell, that he does better against southpaws. And you see why. Because Campbell's not Purnell, <laughs> right? Whereas Purnell makes it so that that left would have to hit him in the back of his head. And whereas Purnell could duck under the left, Ryan Garc uh, Luke Campbell, like Gervonta Davis, is looking at Ryan Garcia, not the side eye of a defensive wizard, but is looking at him. And the problem is, as Campbell throws his right hand, right, the jab hand for a southpaw, Ryan Garcia with hand speed is timing it and is trying to come over it with his left hook. I believe that's what he wants to do against Gervonta Davis. Folks, this is a dangerous fight. While I think Davis wins the fight, the way I'm playing it is on KO props. But you need to understand, this is high risk. I've lost on KO props in the past. I remember I was convinced Arthur Abraham, Carl Frotch was going to end by a KO. Then Carl Frotch shows up looking like Ali. <laughs> Outboxes Arthur Abraham. Well, let's just say if that happens, if 
this flight goes the distance and you consider the KO props I'm just about to explain, you lose it all. Right? So I believe the casino has accurately priced this fight. Davis is a big favorite. Davis should be a big favorite. Davis just recently had a fight to stay sharp. Ryan Garcia, there's more mystery. Also, Ryan Garcia was with Reynoso, Canelo's trainer, moved over to Joe Goosen. That relationship is still relatively new. Ryan Garcia isn't as fundamentally sound as Gervonta Davis is. Right? Ryan Garcia has his head up. Ryan Garcia is standing straight up. Ryan Garcia sometimes is up against the ropes. Garcia, tall guy, looks defenseless to the body. There's going to be a height gap in this fight. If Gervonta Davis channels Joe Fraser or Mike Tyson, he's going to pay attention to Ryan Garcia's body. So let's talk about how we can hedge the play and beat the casino. Gervonta Davis, by KO, is a minus 134. Folks, Davis is a blessed puncher. If, in fact, Ryan Garcia is weight-drained, is depleted, himself is not defensively blessed, Right? If he can't handle keeping a shorter man off of him, and I'm just telling you, you have a whole line of people who could not handle a Joe Fraser, a Mike Tyson, a Dwight Cowie, right? a Rocky Marciano. If Ryan Garcia simply cannot keep a man whose nickname is Tank off of him and off of his body, and Tank can take a lot of the sting out of Garcia's left hook by fighting low, right? Just think of a country and think of the southwest corner, right? The United States, think of San Diego. Gervonta Davis needs to be low and needs to be on that side, southwest, right? Going after Ryan Garcia's body, right? Being left hand heavy, not throwing a lot of right hands because that would give Garcia, who has other punches, but his key punch is the left hook, an opportunity to counter with the left hook. Right? If Gervonta Davis is able to do that against a fighter who has not gone, well, hasn't even been in the ring recently, right? So hasn't gone 12 rounds recently. I believe a stoppage is a distinct possibility. In fact, I believe it's a likelihood. The Ryan Garcia side of the play. The casino's daring you. Ryan Garcia by KO is a plus 383. I told you, Gervonta Davis is heavily favored. But understand, with punchers, Ryan Garcia only has to be right once. Right? If Ryan Garcia starts landing that left hook, oh my. Right? It's hard. It's fast. Again, Davis is not Pernell Whitaker. Right? He's not going to think, okay, I got hit with that. I need to remember my defensive side. Right? He's not Floyd Mayweather. Right? One of the problems with the greats is they think everyone's themselves. Right? Wilt Chamberlain tried to coach basketball. Magic Johnson tried to coach basketball. Believe it or not, Joe Fraser used to be in the corner of Marvis Fraser. There's a fight. I think it's Marvis against Burt Cooper or some fight like that. Where Joe Fraser says to his son, hey, just go in there. <laughs> just go in there and mix it up with him. Right? A Joe Fraser could do that. Marvis, no. Well, here, right? Just understand, neither fighter is defensively blessed. Both fighters 
have punches. Garcia has the hand speed advantage. Garcia's punch is probably bigger than Tank's. I'm talking about the left hook. It's special. Right? I like a hedge here. Gervonta Davis by KO, minus 134. Ryan Garcia by KO, plus 383. But understand the risk involved. If it goes the distance, you will have lost on both sides of the play. You don't even need to stick around to hear the ring announcer tell you who the winner is because you'll already know that you're the loser in this. Now let's do the math here. Let's talk about why this spread works. If you bet $134 on Gervonta Davis, and I'm just using round numbers because Davis is a minus 134. And if he wins by KO, you win $100, right? It's bet $134 to win $100, right? If I bet 50 on Ryan Garcia, and Ryan Garcia wins by KO. I get 50 times 3.83 plus the return of my 50. Now, I had the math figured out, and of course I'm mid-video without it in front of me. But you would net about $90 off the exercise. In other words, you would win $190 on the Ryan Garcia side, minus the $100 that you put on the Gervonta Davis side. Right, excuse me, minus the 134 that you put on the Gervonta Davis side. Right, so you would net around $60, a little bit less than $60. If Davis wins by KO, You win 100, you lose the 50 that you bet on the Ryan Garcia side. You would net $50. So, these two guys could come out, the bullets could start flying, both guys could be landing their Sunday punches. If you take the KO prop, folks, you don't care who hits the canvas. You're set up to make money if either guy gets stopped by KO. While I think Gervonta Davis wins, look, I'm just interested in making bets that get me dollars, right? I'm in the U.S., right? If you're in the U.K., pounds, right? I just want a profit. I want to leave the casino wealthier than I showed up at the casino or leave my online betting site, wink, wink, richer than when I got on the online betting site. Because this is a dangerous fight between two punchers, one weight drained, the other not defensively blessed and not Joe Fraser in terms of foot speed or pacing, I think either guy could get stopped. That's how I'm betting it, right? Gervonta Davis by KO, minus 134. Ryan Garcia by KO, plus 383. Work through the numbers, right? Have it set up where you profit if either wins. Let me make another point, too. Big fight, Gervonta Davis against Mario Barrios. It was a big fight. Now, understand, Floyd Mayweather is there at ringside. He's rooting for Gervonta Davis, who's not just a former client of Floyd's, right? Not just the guy who Floyd, quite frankly, helped put in a position to get huge fights like this, but also a friend, right? You can imagine, you're Floyd Mayweather, you see a promising guy, and Gervonta, great amateur career, you see a promising guy making things happen. You want to help him, right? Well, understand he's fighting Mario Barrios, who didn't have a big punch, right? Did not have a big punch. And whereas Joe Fraser would have been up in his face. 
Mike Tyson would have been up in his face. Rocky Marciano, I'm just naming shorter guys with big punches, would have been up in his face. Javante Davis was leisurely about it. Too leisurely. To the point where Floyd, between rounds, Floyd was not in the corner. Floyd had to walk over to the corner to talk to his fighter. To say to him, hey, player, what are you doing? Right? Just food for thought. Pacing of fights sometimes gets away from Gervonta Davis. Right? You need to think about that as you bet on this matchup. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you have another strategy for playing this highly contentious fight, Tell us about it in the comment section of this YouTube video. I'm taking Gervonta Davis by KO minus 134, hedged with Ryan Garcia by KO plus 383, because that's a huge opportunity, right? <laughs> huge variance there where I can hedge the play, get a profit if either wins. But just understand, I'll lose it all if this fight goes the distance. That's how I see it. That's the risk I'm taking. Let me hear about the risk you're taking in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.